Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this we are taking a look at Tiny Vista, which was made by Experience, the same people who made Tiny 7 that we took a look at in the last video. Tiny Vista is clearly a, as the name implies, a tiny version of Windows Vista designed to cut out all the bloat and unnecessary components to ensure a lightweight and smooth installation process and the, the usability of the operating system. I'm so excited to take a look at this OS, as I really do enjoy taking a look at these tiny OSs to see what they cut out. Last video, as I said, we took a look at Tiny7, which was made by the same developers as Tiny Vista. And I believe we also took a look at Tiny XP at some point, which was also made by Experience. So let's get into the installer process. And here we can see there's nothing too out of the ordinary so far. It looks like your typical Windows Vista installation. Nothing too strange yet. Although it did skip the first screen and took us straight into our disk selector. So we're going to go ahead and just install, overwrite what's on this disk because I was doing some testing beforehand. And I'll be back once we boot into the desktop. Alright, and here we are. So it's completely skipped the out-of-box experience. It did not actually go into anything beyond that. It just took us straight into the desktop. Um, in my testing, I found out that VMware tools do not actually work. So, you know... I'm really not surprised there um, for the simple fact that VMware tools typically doesn't work on, you know, well, actually, I haven't actually had, I haven't had it work on Windows Vista at all without having to download something special. Now, I'm just trying to get the best resolution for you guys, but either way, it looks like it's going to stretch and be complicated. Again, probably, well, not probably, something to do with the drivers. Well, that one doesn't look stretched, but then you can't see anything, so, you know. All right, we're gonna go with that for now. So here we are inside of Tiny Vista. First things first, as we can see, the background is the same background as Tiny7. I believe they used this. It's a nice gradient, I really do like it, although it would be better if they didn't watermark their name on it. Although, it's not as bad as some other custom builds, so you know we can let it slide. Here on the desktop, we have a shortcut to our computer. And if we right click on computer and go to properties, we can see that this is Windows Vista Ultimate Service Pack 1. And of course, it is a 32 bit operating system because it ensures, you know, 32 bit takes up less resources, it's more lightweight than a 64 bit. Then we have a recycle bin. And lastly, we have a folder called Experience with a bunch of files that haven't been updated since 2008, including Komodo Firewall, which allows us to activate some level of firewall software firewall rather moving down desktop icon layout driver install tool hibernation tools keyboard settings nvidia hotfix registry backup and user password if i can click on the right one there we go so a whole bunch of tools designed to make your life easier i don't know why user password is included here could it be because you can't set it in windows or control panel rather i don't know um, but I do find it funny that everything is modified in 2008, so they must, I don't believe this is actually from 2008, uh, so they must have went back and changed the time on some of these things. In the system tray, we of course have our time, we have our volume, we have our network, USB, safely remove hardware, and Bluetooth devices. Over on the left side of our taskbar, we have Internet Explorer, switch between Windows, and show desktop. And of course, the start menu. Now in the start menu by default, as you can see that we have Internet Explorer, Windows Mail, Media Player, Photo Gallery, Windows Live. I don't know why that's even here anymore. Uh, that should have been taken out. Default programs and Notepad. But I don't think Notepad is there by default. I think it's there because we opened that README file. And then we have Administrator. That's our username. Documents, Pictures, Computer, Network, Connect to, Control Panel, Administrative Tools. I don't believe that's there by default in Windows Vista, although maybe I'm mistaken. I haven't taken a look at Windows Vista in quite a while. Moving into all programs, we can see that we have default programs, Internet Explorer. I'm actually curious to know what version of IE this is. Uh, that That's assuming I can remember where it is. You know, I, I feel really stupid for not even knowing where to find the version of Internet Explorer. Oh, it's actually right there. There we go. Internet Explorer 7 with the old Windows XP logo. Wow. Did this... Did the, I feel like this shipped with Windows Vista, but I don't know why that old logo is still there. Moving back, Windows Contacts, Live Messenger, Download. Oh, so this just is just like a shortcut. It's just a link. Okay. Windows Mail, Windows Media Player, Windows Photo Gallery, Windows Update, and then in Accessories, we have 
all of our typical accessories, nothing too special. The classic Windows XP Vista style of paint, which was always fun to play around with. No game folder, which again, for a lightweight operating system, is fine, but you know, everyone on this channel, if you recall previous videos, you know, I really like Purple Place. That was my favorite game when I had a Vista machine. And then in system tools, you know, typical stuff like that. Extras and upgrades, small business resources, because remember, we are running Windows Vista Ultimate, which I would be curious to know what the reasoning for Ultimate would be. I don't know if it is just naturally more lightweight or what the deal is with that. Maintenance is empty and startup is empty. Startup, oh, they, okay. I saw the date created pop up for a second. I was like, does it say 2008? But no, it says 2024, which is obviously correct. Let's see what kind of backgrounds, okay, that's it. We only have one background. They wiped everything else out except for solid colors. You know, we could go with a solid color, but let's go back to how it was intended to be. And then obviously because we don't have sound drivers, I'm sure we can't activate Windows Arrow, but we could just go ahead and make this look like Windows, a really old version of Windows. I haven't played around with these themes in quite a long time. And I really do miss playing around with themes on older operating systems because like you can make some things look really cool. But anyways, we'll go back to Vista Standard because that's, again, how it's intended to be. Let's look at Task Manager and see how much, uh, what our processes look like. So we're using 5% of the CPU, which again, remember, is a 32-bit, I believe a one core that I put on this VM. And we're using 356 mem 355 megabytes of memory out of one gig. So honestly, not that bad. I mean, this is pretty, pretty good. 34% not doing anything. I mean, not bad, not great but when you think about we only have one gig of ram you know and then let's look at our storage usage here we have 36.7 out of 39.9 so we are using 3.2 gigabytes of ram here the iso itself is only 699 megabytes so take that as you will there isn't even a setup.exe i mean just look at some of the stuff in here i mean it's just so empty and there's even an efi folder which makes me think that can this boot on uh, like an EFI system? But yeah, there's even there's no setup.exe, there's nothing. This is a very lightweight OS. So that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. That being said, I'll see you all in the next one.